Okay, so we're back. Uh, this is my series on Python in physics, focusing mostly on the Python part. And so today we're going to look at, here's, here's the program I had in the previous lesson on projectile motion, uh, which I th think turned out pretty nice. Um, but what, I'm not really gonna do a lot of Python stuff today. Uh, it's mostly physics, but it's super useful. And then I'm gonna lead that into a n the next program, which will be a new Python thing. Um, and again, I, I'm making this mostly for like physics faculty to, to use Python in their course. So I assume that they'll understand some physics. Um, you could be a physics student and maybe you find this useful too. Uh, I just wanna be here for you online forever. That's my goal. Okay, so I'm using GlowScript vPython. This is in Trinket. Let me just run this program again just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, and, and we're gonna change this program. So this is my model for a, a tennis ball that's thrown in the air. Uh, the blue, the cyan arrow is the velocity just because I thought that'd be fun. And then I make a graph of uh, position versus time in the y direction and, and that's that. But what if I change this to like a foam ball? So if it's a foam ball uh, and I throw it with a very low mass, then, then I, I should, it shouldn't be a parabola, it should be a different shape because there should be air resistance. So I wanna add air resistance to this uh, and then, then we can use that in the, next, in the next video. So I wanna talk about some physics real quick just so we're on the same page. Uh, let's switch over here. So air resistance, suppose I have this ball, I throw it in the air with the velocity V. Uh, I know there is the downward gravitational force, mg. And then if the velocity is that way, there's also this backwards pushing air resistance force, F air. Now, uh, a lot of times people will put, write this, the air resistance force is one half rho a c v squared, and that's fine. But this is the magnitude of the air resistance force. So in this case, uh, this is the rho is the density. Let's just put it as 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. That's for air. Uh, a is the area of the ball. So this would be pi r squared. It's the cross-sectional area. Uh, a, C is the drag coefficient, uh, 0 0.47 for a sphere. I'm pretty sure I've done that enough times. And then V is the, the velocity. So you can see that as this thing moves through the air, the velocity changes and that makes this a really hard problem. You can't really, it, it's really difficult to solve analytically uh, because that air resistance force changes. But th we can't even use this in this case. Right, because that's not a vector and that is a vector. So let me write this a better model for the air. And this is just a model, okay. Let's write a better model. F air vector negative one half rho a c magnitude of the velocity squared v hat. So I'm gonna need, if I need this v hat here, the unit vector in the direction of the velocity to make this a vector. And Python cares about vectors, right? It's, if you make something a vector, you can't add things to things that are not vectors. It won't let you do that. Um, I kind of want to make a different change too. In the past, I've been using this for my velocity update. I've been saying uh, v2 equals v1 plus a delta t, right? Uh, I'm going to change this to the momentum principle. So the momentum principle says f net equals uh, delta P momentum over delta T, where P is MV. I like using momentum better. So that means if I, if I solve this for P2, I get P2 equals P1 plus F net delta T. And, and this just means that I can deal with the forces. I don't have to find the force and find the acceleration and update the velocity. Now it does mean a problem because I, I do have velocity in here. Uh, and then I can write the position update R2 is R1 plus P2 delta T over M, All right? So I need to take the momentum divided by the mass. And then up here, I can write this as, uh, I can write F air. You can either solve for the velocity, which I probably will do, I usually do it that way. Or I can write uh, negative one half rho A C P squared over m squared times, and then I can just do p hat. p hat is the direction of the momentum, which is the same as the direction of the velocity. Okay, 
So let's go back over to the program and let's make some modifications, add this in here and see if we can get that to work. And in fact, I think I'm going to add another ball. Um, if I have two balls, I can see one with air resistance, one without. Uh, it'll be fun that way. Okay, switching back to computer, here we are. Okay, so I'm going to modify this program. Uh, I guess I should save it. Uh, let's copy it because I think I gave you a link of, to that. And copy it and let's say uh, ball with air. Air drag. And let's run that. Because I don't know why, if I don't run it and then save it, it weird things happen sometimes. Save. It didn't save. There it is. Okay. So I have all that there. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to throw this a lot faster. So let's let's give this a velocity of of uh, seven point two. I completely made that up. Uh, and I'm going to move the ball. Uh, let's see. So I have my ground is two point five meters. So let's put this at negative two in the x direction. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I need to make my ground a little bit bigger. Let's make this uh, 4.5. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm happy. Okay, now I'm gonna make another ball. So I'm just gonna put it down here. Uh, I don't really even care about, let's turn off this arrow. Oops. Go down here, turn off the arrow and then run it, make sure it's doing okay. Yeah, okay. Now let's make a second ball, let's make it Let's make it cyan colored. So I'm gonna say this ball two is sphere, position equals ball dot POS. It's the same position. Uh, the radius is the same, equals ball dot radius. Yeah, I have one called ball and one called ball two, I know that's a little weird. And then color equals color dot cyan, and make trail equals true. Okay, now I need to give it a momentum, um, and I need to give this one a momentum too. So let's say ball dot p equals all of this times uh, ball dot m times that. Okay, so ball two dot m equals. Let's make it super. That one was fifty grams. Let's make this one five grams. Ball two dot p equals. Um, I was gonna say, I gotta take I gotta do the same thing. Let's just copy that and put ball two. Same velocity. Okay, I think we're good. Now down here, I, I want to just make it with no air resistance, just so I make sure I, I'm doing everything right. Uh, so let's say F, and then let's say F two is ball two dot m times g. I don't need this acceleration. As changes to ball dot p, ball dot p, f times dt. That's the that's the net force on ball one, and then down here I'm going to change this to ball dot p divided by ball dot m. That's all for the first ball. Now let's go up here and do the second ball. Ball two dot p equals ball two dot p plus f two times dt. And then down here, ball two dot pos, ball two dot pos plus ball two dot p times dt divided by ball two dot m. Okay, let's see. So these should be two balls right on top of each other with nothing exciting happening. Let's do that. And something exciting happened that it didn't run. Can't find see. Can't find bull two because I can't type. Okay, so where is ball two? Where did I type that wrong? Ball two, ball two, ball two. Where is ball two? B L A L two. Where did I get that? Ball. Oh, here it is. Okay, run. Okay, so it's two balls on top of each other. 
Now let's add our stuff for the drag. So I'm going to say row equals 1.2, uh, a equals, uh, I really should do ball 2.a, but I'm just going to do a. It's going to be pi times ball 2 dot radius squared. Now, sometimes when you do this, you may want to make the size of the ball different than the actual, than the calculated size. But here, hopefully, it should be the same. Uh, C equals 0.47. You can, if you Google uh, drag coefficients, you can look it up. I'm almost positive it's 0.47 for a smooth sphere, but, you know, that's fine. Okay, so now down here, I have the force on the ball. It's just the gravitational force. I'm going to add in my calculation, negative 0.5 times rho times a times c times the magnitude of p, no, ball 2 dot p squared, uh, times norm ball 2 dot p divided by ball 2 dot m squared, because I need the velocity. So I'm, I'm taking the magnitude of the momentum, uh, and then I need to divide by the, the mass of the ball squared too. So I get the velocity. That's it. That's all I need to do. I just need to add that one thing in there. Uh, I'm going to go down here and plot. Let's plot. Let's just run it. Let's see what I'm going to do on time. I think I'm okay. Okay, so here you see one thing is that I ran this as long as that ball is above the ground. So that one doesn't go as high so it actually falls down. Uh, let's increase the mass a little bit. Uh, I had this 5 grams. Let's make it uh, 20. Let's just see what happens. No, that's 2. That's 20. Okay. So we can model the motion of a ball with air drag. Um, and, and like I said, there's no real new physics in there. But what I'm going to do is is now answer the question, well, what what angle does it go the maximum range? And that's a great question because that use, we're going to have to use functions. We don't have to use functions, but we're going to use functions. So the next lesson, spoiler alert, is going to be about functions in Python. And I'll include the code to this down below.